All right. Hello. Welcome to Race Brain Podcast. My name is Rich Ryan, joined today by the Bracken Crocker. Jack is going to catch up with us in maybe an hour. Who cares? He's doing nerd stuff. His boss wouldn't let him off. Our bosses were like, you guys are good to go. Do Our whatever you want. love us. They, yeah, exactly. They, they say, hey, whatever makes you happy, do it. So yeah. here we are, me and you. It's the good old days. If we had done this in the past before starting this. <laughs> what the what we would have wished the old days to be. Yeah, these would have been the good old days. So we are going to do a little bit of a mashup today. We don't have a ton to talk about when it comes to hybrid or OCR. Next week, I believe FISO is popping off. So Take your word be, on that. That'll be that'll be exciting. I mean, hey, that was the most competitive OCR event last year. It was. So we'll see how it's going to be in Costa Rica. I believe it's humid. Gonna be muggy. Gonna be muggy. I would. I would bet. Do you been? On, to Costa Rica. Yeah. I have not. I've. Uh, no. I. I've not been. I've not been anywhere in Central America. You? I did Costa Rica. We did Kabuya. It's a pretty sweet area, but it is warm and muggy. It's mountainous. Not where we were. No. They have elevation, but not where we were. You were coastal surfing. Uh, not surfing. But coastal, yes. Can you surf? I've never tried. I bet you so I'm going to say no, I cannot surf. You can get up on that board, no problem. I don't. That's one of those sports. People assume I like extreme sports or even, I don't even know if that's considered extreme. I have no interest. Like mountain biking, hang gliding, skydiving, surfing, snowmobiling, motocross, like none of it. It has no draw for me. And I don't, I don't look down on it. I just don't have any desire to do that stuff yeah i feel the same i feel the same anything that's like well i guess us as endurance athletes anything that's like powered or like a machine you have to power mm -hmm. is just i'm not that interested in it. it it doesn't move the needle for me also i don't like gear based sports what well, impossible which is ironic that my son got into motor sports you were all up on all up in my shit the other day because I didn't have some sort of response about my bike trainer. You're like, oh, okay. You're like, I'm right. a gear guy. You? I, I don't want to be, but it's in our realm, so I have to research it. Yeah, it's probably better as you, that you're not into. I mean, it, now with the with the carding, are you getting in there? Are you on the Are you on the message boards? Trying I mean, to maximize. I, I, all I do is lurk. I haven't posted yet, but I'm on like, there's three different carding threads that I'm always on. I live on YouTube right now. Let's cart.com. Uh, that probably should exist. You can make, you can make that. That'll, that'll work. But we got FISO coming up. Uh, there is a high rocks in Australia this weekend to keep an eye on. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the CrossFit Games, what happened with the endurance events in particular and how that, what we can learn from that and how those athletes kind of compare to the uh, athletes that we have in High Rocks mm -hmm. now, which is going to be interesting. We're going to wait for Jack for that. You know, Jack might have some input. Then uh, maybe a little Olympics talk at the end because we got to. I'm caught up. You catch everything? You're fully caught up. Fully caught up. I was doing something social on, what was it, Saturday night? So, but it was on, so I was catching pieces of it. Mm -hmm. So I saw all the results, but I went back yesterday and watched like the 5K, the 800 from uh, from beginning to end. I did not catch the marathon. Were you locked in? I am fully caught up on running sports. Oh, that, yeah. I'm not going to go back and do the other stuff. I want to watch the uh, road bike race. I want to watch... I guess I could watch the try. I've done try. Anything with running in it is done and dusted. The laser pistol race? Pentathlon? Uh, uh, okay, everything but that. All the just real sports. Of, just out of, uh, out of spite, out of principle? You know, I watched back when it when Ian Adamson first came onto the scene and started talking to us about this. I went and watched the world. I actually got up early and watched the world championships. It was like in Belgium or something like that. Uh. And it just... Again, just kind of like motocross, it just didn't do anything for me. Hmm. It, there's too many random things in it. There's, you know, at the time it was there's horse riding and not, and there's swimming and 
the 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 running event itself was interesting because it was basically eight hundred meter runs. So but, the, was no. there not actually? There wasn't actually OCR. It was just the laser pistol for this event is what I'm reading right now That because I didn't watch any. It says fencing, riding. Oh, no, no. They were taking no the, riding. That, that was That's out. Was that replaced by the short course OCR? It was supposed to be, but I did not. Or does it not happen until LA? Maybe not till LA. I don't know. Because, I mean, I figured we would have seen something, right? All right. So I saw a post the other day. Uh, Rose Wetzel made a post maybe this weekend about Olympic trials saying that she had been within two seconds of qualifying for trials and uh, talked about how she diverged from that path, but thought, you know, I could make a run at making it to trials in the future. Uh, But someone had commented, how exciting is it that OCR will be represented in the Olympics in LA? And her comment back was like, yes, that's so exciting. Is that her being positive towards modern pentathlon is there like, ocr it's do you consider that ocr in the olympics i do not because it's not ocr athletes yeah right correct and it's less than 100 meters as part of pentathlon i would not like that is a spin. is that a win for us if you want to spin it that way, I suppose. I mean, it's 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 sort of relevant. I guess it would bring more some eyeballs to it, some exposure more than if it wasn't there. Yeah, I don't think it's not a negative. I don't. I, so I I tried to spend some time after that, thinking through it <laughs> as if I didn't have pre existing biases towards it, which I absolutely do. You do. <laughs> You I do. do, and I've been very vocal about it. And I was trying to think of like, is this a good thing for us? Is this a win for us? And what I kept coming back to is, does it benefit us? I didn't, if I, I couldn't come up with a better way of saying, is it a win for us? Other than, can we tangibly benefit from it? Mm-hmm. And the only tangible benefit I could see is if it in turn made the 40, 60, 80, whatever, more popular because people see it and then go and sign up for it. So that, which then, if that got more popular, would funding grow for the 15K events? I don't know. Like, it's kind of a stretch. But as of right now, it looks like no one in our sport gets any benefit from it. Like, I'm trying the gymnastics to make it work. I suppose, yeah. That would be a stretch, too. If, like, the 40, 60, 80, 120, whatever they have in there how much people would be interested in that and if there is a way to capitalize financially through that and then have it come up to the events that we know and care about it's a stretch it is a stretch i don't think people would care about it i think an athlete might see it and think i can do that and then go try it and then there's just more people there but no ocr is not in the olympics people keep saying that but it's not there is an obstacle course that will be in the Olympics. Right. Just games when they had the O course. Mm-hmm. Yancey helped design it, right? Which games we was it? Madison oh, three did years he ago. Did he help design that? I thought so. I thought he had some part of it or at least was consulted. But even that, that wasn't obstacle racing in the High Rocks games. No. No more than CrossFit. triathlon was in the High Rocks games. CrossFit games. Um, CrossFit games, <laughs> the High Rocks games, like, which would be that, cool. So, <laughs> I'd watch the High Rocks games. So anyway, like not to beat a dead horse, but I tried this weekend to really decide like, does, is this cool? Does this help our sport? Does it move the needle? And I just keep coming back to no, that, that doesn't, but it doesn't I think it hurt. actively it doesn't hurts hurt. it. You think, I think it does? It do- I still think it does. How? Because it's the sport that's on its way of getting kicked out. Which one, the pentathlon I mean, or OCR? Pentathlon. And OCR. Well, we haven't been kicked out of the Olympics because we never got in. (laughs) We didn't kick it out of consciousness. But they're looking to get rid of it. And they're grasping at straws and Hail Marys to make it relevant. And they're trying to capture that Ninja Warrior enthusiasm for it. And if they get axed, we are associated with a failed project. Mm. So I don't see how someone's like, hey, you were working with this, this, this sport that was really bad for us and we didn't want, but now we want to work with you. I, unless they look at it and say there's huge potential, but the course sucks. So I, I, I think it actually could be a negative for our long-term 
chances at anything, no matter how slim they might be. But again, that's more of an opinion. And uh, again, it, it might be a bit of, of a stretch, right? We're assuming that we would be that the sport of pentathlon having it fail, people would know enough that we were involved in it in the first place. The analogy that came to mind was when James Spader popped on to the office and it didn't work, right? Are people like, oh, this is James Spader's fault? Or is it just like, hey, the show ran its course? That's a good analogy. Thank you. Because I just don't think people would know enough about pentathlon. Having OCR in... No, I'm talking about Olympic Committee. Oh, and at the Olympic Committee would then see it as the, like, hey, we tried this. Yeah. But like, like, were you friends with that weird person we kicked out? <laughs> like, well, yeah, but we were using them. Does it need to be in the Olympics? Does it need, does it, like, if that happens? I think it did. I think at its, when its swell rose to its highest point, let's say somewhere between 15 and 19, 15 and 18. Oh, camera's going to start up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow Sometime in that time, I think it made sense. Like, yeah, it deserved to be in there. Oh man, yeah, 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 I, get time this. I don't think it deserves to be in there anymore. Why did it then? Because it was growing and it was on TV and people were talking about it and there was momentum. Mm -hmm. And I think it could have been symbiotic where it would have grown the sport and, and eyes would have gone to the Olympics for it. So uh, we had talked, there were 4 million unique participants that year in OCR in the in North America. That's enough eyes that all would have tuned in to watch it, a sport that they personally tried, that that would make it a needle mover from our continent towards the, for, for the IOC. If you put a new sport in and 4 million eyes and one demographic all tune in at once, I think that's enough that they would say, that's kind of cool. And you know, Europe would have tuned in to some extent. So I think it would have made sense then. I don't, I'm not saying it deserved it then. But compared to now, yeah, because we're at a reduced capacity. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about how do we save the sport, I don't think the Olympics look at that as like, let's swipe right on that one or left. Which way are you swiping? I believe you swipe right. Swipe right, yeah. Never, you never got on those dating apps. You were, you were locked down. I was pre-technology. You were locked down. So this is a question now for High Rocks, right? Would yes. we see... High Rocks or a High Rocks style event in the Olympics, say 2032. Is it true that, that Australia has it? Brisbane is what I'm is what I've Googled. Okay, first we got to say Brisbane. Brisbane. My Marin just came home this week from Australia, uh, and I'm got the up Australia, a lot of culture. You got it, the Australian insight. Is she going to do that? Is she going to go back? I believe it's Brisbane this weekend. Sweden. She signed with. Oh. So nice. she's heading back to Lulia, Sweden. Nice. So she's done with the Aussie League. Currently, yeah. She went like winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, and now she's back to Sweden. So Brisbane is what I have here that it, it, that they have the thirty, the twenty thirty two. Mm -hmm. And is there there is there something where the host city does get to choose some sports? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think you get to sample one or two, and which was breaking. We locked and in. It, uh it went over poorly. It was I I like watching breakdancing, breaking. There's but... a bit of, of of your upbringing coming through there. The Janko style of you is like I could do that. <laughs> Listen to some Limp Biscuit. Let me let me pop out. Let me just roll out some cardboard. Watch me cook. But the but I did had no interest watching this. Did yeah. you watch it? No. No. So in the U.S., we're going to get flag football. Mm -hmm. Sick. I think baseball is coming back. What else did I see? Softball. Uh, so baseball and softball. And then I thought like there was another ball sport like racquetball or something that is within the consciousness of what we do here. Mm -hmm. Do we think Brisbane can look at it and be like, hey, high rock style event. Yeah. It's just getting popping right now. In Australia, it's an event that is conducive with that culture that they have down there, fitness-wise. Could we see it there? Something like it, yes. And, and what I don't know 
And if I knew we were doing this, I would have brushed up on my Olympic requirements because Spartan had their whole checklist. You need to be in what, like 48 nations and you need to have regional championships and like six or whatever it is. There's this mm. whole checklist of things you need to do to be considered for eligibility for the mm. IOC to even consider your case. But I don't know if those apply to the, I forgot what you call them, but basically the sampling. When the, okay. the host nation says, we're going to go with this. I don't know what, how many of those requirements apply to the, the wild card sports, but and what I, and do, breaking met this, these requirements, I mean, like flag, about flag that football. How could that, how could that be? Right. So that's what I don't know. It seems like there's less strict requirements for that. There's less of a vetting process. But what the same question comes out from this, from Spartan racing to CrossFit to High Rocks is, can a brand yes. sport right. be in the Olympics? Because CrossFit should be in over any of us. Yes. Right? Yeah. But you can't have CrossFit because that is a brand. Like Iron Man's not in it. Right. The triathlon so is. triathlon's in it. So I don't know if High Rocks can unless they do some maneuvering. It's it's eight years from now. We're gonna see competition, right? We're gonna see competition to High Rocks within those eight years, guaranteed. Even if it is just something like DecaFit, but with a more serious company backing it and and and, and making it a spectacle the way that High Rocks has. So, and if it becomes a you know, fitness racing, hybrid racing, whatever it ends up being called. Mm -hmm. It could happen. Someone asked me. I mean, I'm sure you've gotten asked. A lot of people asking. A lot of people asking. A lot of people asking about it. Streets are talking. And I was like, there's a bunch of goofy shit in the Olympics. Like, yeah, I could I could see it. Yeah. Someone asked about pickleball. They're like, that's a huge thing in the US. Will that get sampled in LA? Like, well, I think they've already decided, but then I thought that's not goofy when you look at badminton <laughs> or table. It's just, it's just it's just second. Table tennis is a tough watch, man. I, I We were at uh, A-list soccer season ended this week, so we went out to eat afterwards, and it was on in the background. It was awesome. You think so? In that capacity. Like, you're doing something, you're watching. Mm. But the, is volleys it are, the volleys are than, shorter than I, than I was anticipating. Okay. Is it any goofier than pickleball? No. No. The Olympics are like 30 to 50% goofy games. It's a lot, it's a lot goofy. Yeah. It is a lot goofy for sure. So we, we could definitely definitely see it happening. And it's so strange that these are sports that uh, my, well, Amy's uncle, uncle-in-law? Is that what that is? I roll with that. He's think, he's like, oh, the I think that it'll be an NCAA sport, pickleball. And I was like, 0% chance. I'll let you, we can bet anything you want on, a, on, the, on an infinite timeline. And I'm going to win this bet. But it's more likely that it will become an Olympic sport than a collegiate sport. Yeah, it's a, I don't understand it because it was uh, kind of like a, a byproduct of the COVID vacuum. Like people got into new stuff and suddenly pickleball just took off. But we've had things like this before. And then they get really big and then they fade out. And it still seems to be kind of sticking around. It's a good pastime. It's a fun thing that doesn't require too much activity, but makes but you some. feel active. Yes, but you are definitely more active than not. So I'm pro, but I don't need to see that shit in the NCAA. I don't need to see it in the Olympics. That's for sure. I don't need to, but I don't think I'm the intended audience. But what I think it's interesting is it's our version of our grandparents' squash court and handball, um, racquetball. That's what pickleball is. Yeah. It's a smaller compact tennis and tennis is elitist by nature, kind of like how golf is. Like there's a certain type of person who generally does that thing. You gotta be good. You gotta be skilled to like get anything from tennis. Yeah. Pickleball is the every man's tennis, which is what racquetball always was. Bunch of sweaty dudes in jock straps at the local YMCA and with rec specs on just slapping it around and having a blast and hitting the sauna after. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where we are. What have we done? Where are we now? Is High Rocks going to be? I think, okay, I really believed OCR could do it. But too many things had to come in 
had to all align so from formatting the sport to Joe DeSena, not being Joe DeSena. Mm. He was always going to have a stranglehold on it. It's why they're mm. great. It's why they're dying. Mm. IROX has a little bit of advantage. It's already pretty regulated. Mm -hmm. It's already pretty palatable. Mm -hmm. They solved the biggest issue OCR had, which was how do we show the entire thing? Right. And they're headed by someone who's already been to the Olympics and understands that process and doesn't need to, he hasn't made himself into a figurehead. What kind of, what kind of advantage is it for OCR? It always just to me seems more like an ego stroke than anything like is this something that is going to be that valuable to the worldwide sporting community and to just the the general population to have ocr in the consciousness I, it just seemed like it was like somebody was driving hard so they can have it to their name yeah so like what what would be the value like do they even is this just a conversation that's going to come up because now it's the olympics or is it actually the pinnacle of, of what people decide a good sport is and when you think about that, like the baseball wasn't in it, football is not in it, and those are like thriving sports con comparatively to what yeah. we have here in this niche space. Do, does this even need to happen? Is it a distraction? Is it better off without? It doesn't need to happen. I believe, now this is uninformed in terms of numbers. Nice. Hell yeah. So I'm going to state it with confidence. Nice. I do not believe the Olympics has any notable positive impact on a sports growth mm. outside of glamorous sports that are a bit niche have a big boom in signups post Olympic cycle, like gymnastics, swim clubs, swim. things like that. You get a ton of signups right after. However, kayaking, dressage, badminton, mm. ski jumping, those sports exist in a bubble and they're in the Olympics because it's like the, the Olympics is kind of a showcase for goofy games and esoteric sports. And so I don't believe it grows a sport. Like you said, the biggest sports aren't generally in it. Soccer, football is, and that's the biggest sport on earth. Right. But the most famous, most lucrative outside of that like an F1 or a NASCAR or uh, Iron Man or I mean, that shouldn't even qualify, but football, Major League Baseball, things like that. They don't care. They'd rather not. Yeah. So no, I don't think the season. I, I don't think it's this like golden goose that a lot of people like if we could just get to the Olympics, like and what? What happens that, afterwards? That's what I mean. It seems more just like, hey, that's something I do. I want to see it just so you can feel good about yourself and where you're spending time and the, and the the organizers of these companies can again put a stamp on a legacy type of thing and maybe that's that is where it ends up going right people just want to have it's like the next tier of accomplishment for people in terms it's of it's all ego though you're right it's all ego the the organizers and owners want it for a ego and a business acumen standpoint oh we're about to get a thumb then the athletes want it I'll see it in or it was it was right. going and I had to so they can get the so they can get the tattoo. So they can be an Olympian, right? Yeah. The the open waves want it. By association, I do an Olympic sport. Yes. But in terms of it affecting like it's only it's only selfish. Right. Which doesn't help the sport. Doesn't help the sport. And yeah, it might be a distraction. I don't know how costly it would be to pursue trying to meet the standards if at all, unless, unless it's just time and effort. But yeah, it, it could would also, definitely happen, but I don't, I don't care for, for it to happen. It would also, uh, I think it would only shed light on our shoddy qualification process. Now I shouldn't say shoddy because it has improved greatly. And Jack stats last week showed us that it's working. No. But if we're not, ha yeah, we won't give them that satisfaction. No. But if we're not having satisfaction with getting to worlds, what's going to happen when Olympic berths are on the line and there's only three per nation? Like if U.S. thinks it's bad, we can only get four or five into worlds right now. What are we going to think when we can only get three to the Olympics? Well, I mean, then that, that would, is country to country, right? Like if it, it could be simply just appointing people or mm -hmm. having trials, trials. Yep, having it be standards. Yeah, it does 
But if there's multiple sports, multiple companies creating multiple events, mm -hmm. then it could just be open. It doesn't like Hyrox doesn't have to have anything to do with how people actually get there. The cleanest way is to do it like track and field does, which is there's just no world championship that year. Yeah. Just the Olympics. You do that, which means you could just the CrossFit games could be the Olympics. Yes. But it severely limits the field size. Maybe it could expand it. It would go beyond well, 15. Well, for, for, for CrossFit, I meant. For High Rocks, yeah. It expands it. Yeah, it's no problem. Because you're going to get three per country, which is already, there's more than five countries. Boom, world just got bigger. I was hoping it was that Germany would have it in the in 32. Then it would be a lock. You're set. It would be happening. I'm going to be too old, man. I don't even... this. Listen, if I was... 26 right now talking to you i'd be like we gotta make this happen i gotta go in colorado i'm gonna be too old i don't care i don't want to yeah. be i'm not gonna be Olympic. i'm not getting those olympic rings at which point then the next best thing is that you're the coach i'll go i'll hang out never been to brisbane they like their beer me too you're saying but the laser right race, the laser run, it was actually, those dudes are running hard. Uh, oh, yeah, they're fast. Like on. It was like on for a second. It's a 3K with uh, four laser pistol stops. It's like high-level high school running. I think that's fair. Mid-high-level high school running. I mean, they looked good running. They looked like triathletes running. They look like runners, yes. Mm -hmm. They did look look pretty good. I just don't know what we're testing. I keep coming back to that, but like... There's a lot of sports in the Olympics that are weird, but you know what they're testing. This yeah, one doesn't make sense. Pentathlon's kind of funny, right? It's like, right. I get. I guess it would be just because it's definitely steeped in combat, right? There's. Fencing. It used to be the gentlemen's <clears throat> sports. <clears throat> oh, is that right? Right, fencing, shooting, swimming, I'm, riding. I'm, I'm thinking it's just like, hey, you're out to battle. Like it's this is Game of Thrones style. Like you got to ride a horse. You might have to swim across some water. You got to hit somebody with a sword. Mm -hmm. Maybe a, the laser pistol kind of throws me off a little bit with, with that. But well, maybe like gone. Revolutionary War. Yeah. Warrior. Yeah. Okay. Running, mat, running could matter. It's it's like, it's pretty goofy. Yeah. It's, it's goofy for sure. Yeah. Which means it fits the Olympic spirit. It's got to stay. It's got to go. <laughs> it's got to go. go. We're in there. So, um, yeah, with High Rocks and everything, how's your how's your training going? You've been cooking some stuff up. We're going to do a mashup right here. Ding, 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 ding. So Kirk had a big weekend with family. So we, he caught up yesterday. We recorded right before this. Nice. So and you're I all just... So your 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 takes are fresh, or you're, they're or you're fresh? They're empty. polished now. You're going to get the better take. Let's go. So since I strained my MCL sleep twitching, like mm -hmm. the high testosterone hybrid athlete that I am, mm -hmm. I've been straddling the line between training and exercising. Okay. And today kicked off a 14 week training camp to Chicago Let's or yesterday, yesterday did go yesterday was the first double quality session training as of the last 24 hours is just so good, Rich. Like I'm popping right now. You feel ready. good. You're ready. But even if I replicate with... that day for 14 weeks, Jack doesn't stand a chance. He's the host. The but also I think it's fair to build like and not be training training for 32 weeks Can't. or whatever it is. Is having a bit of a base to build build upon. Yeah. So you're gonna stick with some double quality. What's that gonna look like for you? Well, so a little different. Now, this is interesting because we're going to talk about training, but I'm in a different stage of life training-wise than a lot of people competing in the sport right now. Mm -hmm. Like I'm doing what Magida had to do back post-Miami, where I have to do a lot of station work, mm. a lot of station work up front because I don't have that body of work to handle the station work to be able to use my running. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think the sport's at a place right now where the most common... I don't want to say complaint, but takeaway post-race from people I work with or talk to is I just have to get faster at this. Yes. Yes. I'm not on that right now. I have to get more durable and I have to get better at handling the work right now. 
And in my last four to six weeks, hopefully I have four to six weeks to work on it. I Then I have to get faster. But I'm not to that point. I haven't earned that right to be like, hey, I can do everything. I'm just getting dropped. That's not going to be it right now. So my double threshold right now, yesterday was a station threshold. So thousand meter row at trying to hold a 152 or under, like targeting goal race pace or under, and then four minutes of push down, pull back. Hmm. Three rounds of that. Three rounds. Take a okay. break. And then 10 cal assault, 10 per leg, step back lunges, 10 seated wall balls. Mm -hmm. 20, 20, 20, 30, 30, 30, like that. And then at night I did basically 20 by 400. Gotcha. But gotcha. I did it time-wise uphill on the treadmill. So really going in on the station work with maintenance running. That'll be twice per week. And then one standalone kind of running day. You're uh, you're at an advantage, right? When when talking about and something I think about for myself sometimes where well, from the running perspective is I'm like, I think like, why is there an advantage that I have here? And I think it's mechanical. I think it's efficiency wise. And, and you have that as well, where it's you, you even at your slowest is still going to be more efficient than most people at their fastest. Right. So figuring out the best way to get those aerobic gains, get some of that lack, uh, lactic threshold gains elsewhere, elsewhere is just going to be helpful. What do you think about for, and this is something that I've been thinking about, you know, when looking at some other people's trainings and in particular, uh, Alex Bronkovich, I don't know how much time he's doing run threshold stuff. They seem to be works. doing a lot higher he's intensity in, runs. Yeah. And, and maybe because in the station work that they're, <clears throat> when you're doing the mixed modal work, that might kind of bring you down into that anaerobic threshold, lactic threshold zone a little bit more just because it undulates and mm -hmm. it doesn't just ride a line like how running does. You ride a line until you get there and you just like hover at that threshold and you just sit there and you get the gains. But they seem to go beyond and then maybe the station brings it back down somehow. So the actual running like threshold piece, like the, like a 20 by 400, for example, or a uh, five by mile, uh, 10 by 800, whatever we want to call it. Yep. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I, I've gone back and forth with this seemingly several times now. And like, how much benefit is that? Is my s running speed going to be at yeah. my anaerobic threshold? Well, I think we'll start, I'll start with where you led me to, which is efficiency. Mm hmm. There's a huge amount of efficiency that occurs for a certain type of runner when you run a faster than race pace stride. Mm. It forces mm. you to recruit better. You can't run VO2 max inefficiently and get through the entire workout without cracking. You have to develop and very quickly the ability to use just as much as you need and be efficient there. Like the first time someone goes out and runs 12 by 400 on the track at 5K pace or under, they're going to feel really clunky and awkward. And within a few weeks, you're just significantly better at that. And then you find yourself really clicking around on tempo runs mm. and your easy runs feel crisper because there's that huge efficiency piece. Right. So people without a big running background do get a big bang for their buck up front by doing a lot of interval work. You can get the same thing through threshold work if you can get your stride to the point where you can run close to the stride you're going to be using on race day while staying in the engine area you want to be working, but you need more time. You need months to get that or you can get it weeks in VO2 max or faster. So I think they both work, but it's when in your career and when in your training block. Yeah. And that's what I always think with the VO2 max stuff, because you do see such rapid improvement. Yes like that placing it too far out it's like yeah may, you might get some of the gains for the remainder of that block efficiency wise maybe but they might deteriorate it goes away quickly and you're gonna you, you might and it's just not palatable to do unless you're just built different to do like 12 weeks of vo2 max work no thanks seems well, like too much and then you're not then doing aerobic work Exactly. There's that, there's always that compromise. Now I'm going to, I'm going to be my Debbie Downer. Nice. And I'm just going to say I'm taking out the drug equation. Oh, stop it. Because we have a, we have a sport that has some dirt in it 
It has to, all sports do. Mm. And that does change what you can work on when because you recover so much quicker. So if we just take that out and we say, everyone's above board, why can some people work never above threshold and race extremely well on it? And why can some people really struggle? Like you get to a race and you're just tipped over if you haven't been doing like VO2 max or faster work. And it seems like even going back to the OCR days, there are people like compromised running is really dif difficult. Mm -hmm. But some people, if they get their aerobic threshold high enough and their anaerobic threshold high enough, they never damage themselves. They can always return to their running. And other people, that's not enough. They have to do really hard running in order to be able to handle the the type of discomfort in a race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and there's two, it seems like even back in OCR, like you had Hobies and you had Nicole Miracles, you had Ryan Atkins, you had people like myself where like, we did, we respond to different types of things in order to do the same type of output on the course. Not that I'm putting out their output, but I think high rocks, that's it too. You have people who do a huge block of threshold and all the station work they can handle and they come out and they feel like I can't redline and other people, they get out there. Like I never had to redline, mm -hmm. you know, it's so. I think there's just a need for some athletes that and Alex runs a bouncy, aggressive stride. I think it's harder to run that kind of stride at threshold. I think he's the kind of guy that would do more aggressive intervals because he runs an aggressive bouncy stride that has to not deteriorate in the second half of races. And maybe these intervals are short enough. The the thousand meter runs are short enough. Like where we saw him in a 5k, you figured he was going to run mm -hmm. extremely fast and he ran fast for his size. For for a guy doing high rocks, but like yeah. sixteen flat, I mean it's that's fast, right? Whatever, but it's not runner fast. By that's not a guy that would scare you at a local OCR race. Mm, yeah, probably not. Unless he was super good at obstacles, but right. he scares you at the start line with what he can do with his running in a high rocks. Right? Maybe not you. Like he's I mean. scary how he can take the runs to people. That didn't show up in a five k, and so I think he has an interval based stride. Where a Palayo, I don't know what he does in training. He has an endurance stride. Mm. Mm. My guess is he can go harder on ergs and bring a lot of that fitness to his running during the race. He doesn't seem to deteriorate very much on the running almost ever. Like He's he that runner who their it. threshold holds no matter what he does. Yeah, and I think he has a, he has a big aerobic, aerobic base, a big aerobic engine that mm -hmm. he can handle that and get back to – to an E to like under threshold run pace, which is faster than everybody else's at right. threshold. Yeah. And that's like trying to figure out where that balance is and trying to, f like I've been pushing long into these longer efforts a little bit more just for, mm -hmm. you know, the, the respiratory threshold work, just to make sure that that's up to par and spending a lot more time, just like breathing heavy and working my way into that threshold response as opposed to getting there right away and just yeah. hitting it hard. I I started listening to more podcasts this year. Wow. Specifically on high rocks because I keep running into this thing where I feel like I don't know enough <laughs> and I'm not saying I know it all for running, but there's not a whole lot new under the sun in running. No, was, there's like a way. Right, it's going to differ Cycling. based on each. Th there's a way. There's going to yeah. be. A, it's going to differ based off what these athletes need, like within their specific races. But to get you to a certain point, like you, you're not going to do the same kind of brain stuff. surgery. No. So running's figured out mostly. Cycling's figured out mostly. Swimming's figured out mostly. Then you go to triathlon, and it's like you can talk to ten different people, and they train ten different ways. And there's training groups that really work well. But then you have people that go to like the Blumenfeld training style, and they just don't improve. And you have people like Lionel Sanders, who's done seven different training styles in the last seven years, maybe more. And he was at his best when he was doing the most random intense things. And that's high rocks to me. Mm. We know how to lift. We mm. know how to run. We know how to compromise to run. But when you combine it all together, there are so many ways to get it done. And they change throughout seasons of sport. And I, so I was listening to Anthony Parasini on Rock's Life. And then I went on Rock's Life and I listened back to mine and I listened to some of your stuff. And I, I started listening to, I listened to Tiago and I'm listening to all these people talk, trying to figure out like, what am I missing? 
And I've kind of come to the conclusion that anyone who speaks in absolutes only has it figured out up until that point in time. Or with or with themselves or with Correct. one specific athlete. And it's not anything against anyone out there. I just think that it's going to evolve and change six months from now because the sport is too multifaceted to have a like boilerplate template that you just know we apply this and it works because it could, but it might only work for a year hmm. or six months or six weeks. And where is your load? There, there's too many moving parts. We have eight stations and yeah. each run is not the same. It's not like my running's fine. Like your running might be good for four stations and that is a different run on station five. Right. So even your run training can't just be the same throughout your career. So I think it just changes so much. What are your needs right now? So the programming I've written for myself is not a programming I write for a lot of my clients because I'm training like a CrossFitter almost. Like I have to do a ton of station work right now. Where most people come in and running is where they need to improve. But at the same yeah. time, you can't just abandon the station work, right? And the, no. and the discomfort of the, over the long haul. So like doing something, yeah, 16 by 400 is definitely going to make that person who needs to get better at running, better at running. But then the compromise part and mixing that, and the, the, the point you brought about the stride is, is interesting as well. It's like, if this is not how you run during right. high rocks. Then, then it's on the engine. Right. Then you might as well do it on a bike. Yeah. <laughs> not, and, that's, I mean, and that's my point is I'm going to do as much of my engine on ergs right now mm -hmm. because I'm going to be able to run, let's say 350 to four minutes per K, no matter what fitness I'm in. Yeah. If I back off on the stations a little bit, I can get back out and run 350. And if I work hard on the stations, I can run four or four. Oh, like no matter if I run 15 minutes of 5k or 17 minutes in a 5k, I'm going to run around four minutes for my Ks, but I'm going to have minutes swing on the stations right now because I can't do it. I just can't do that thing. Mm. So I don't need to get better at running right now. I need to maintain my running and my engine work should probably go through the ergs with right. maintenance run quality work. 20 by 60, 60 is not going to damage me, but it's going to keep me in touch with what I need to have. Yeah. And you're still working on like, it won't take much to maintain your efficiency, but you still want to maintain it a little bit. Right. And yeah. 20 reps of 60 seconds at 8% incline as the second workout of the day is going to do should that. Should do it. But that should, should not it. be your main mover 15 months into the sport. Yeah. Right. Like where are the state, where are the state power and like, but yeah. And where you're coming in, where you're, where, where yeah. your background is going to, that's what's, that's what's interesting. It's kind, kind of fun about it. Right. Is that there are going to be, We'll, we'll eventually see like different like silos of athlete that we can mm -hmm. kind of dump different methodology onto. Mm -hmm. But right now it's trying to figure out who's in that silo and why, what their background is. And it's so yeah. vast what the body type is, how they run, how they on the ski, how they move. Right. And then figuring and then yeah. trying to close it all together. Cause maybe there's going to be a silo of elite Everyone's going to probably start looking pretty close to the same and going to have pretty similar output on most of the stations and, and, and the running in between. And then maybe, and then that will probably be a methodology, but everyone around it isn't going to fit into that methodology. No. You know that kid's game and they have it in like Dennis office where you, you got that multi-sided plastic thing with holes in it and you've got little pieces of plastic shaped like a star or a square. Ah, yeah. And you just got to put it through there. Like that's what we do with athletes with training. Like you're a star. You need to train through the star hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a weird phrase. Like you're a square. We need to, we're not going to put you through the circle. You got to go through the square, but that's mostly done either through training history or physicality. But Hyrox has the most varied <laughs> training history and physicality that I've ever seen of any sport. Yeah. Like if you just took body type, you would put Hunter and what Graham in the same category, maybe. Like uh, you could just lump weight wise, I guess. Yeah, Ronco is a little bit lighter, but about the, about as tall. You put Tiago and probably, um, and he's a bit Palio on the, in the same now. one. Mm. Like in terms of when they first came in, what they looked like, maybe. But they they don't have the same history. They don't have the same engines. They. Mm. Like, 
no one that looks like Hunter needs to train like Hunter. Mm -hmm. right. Hunter's training changes a lot. Yes. It, and so Alex and Kent are always like the player comp of each other, mm -hmm. Bronco and Kent, but they, they can't train the same way and be effective. Even though they look like relatively similar body types. I know. And history of sport is so different. And that's so you why take our soccer players, <laughs> even right. our two soccer players who've entered, they shouldn't be training the same way. But they have a certain level of proficiency as runners, right? As movers, mm -hmm. right? So there's pieces that can go into their training, but where they might lack, it's going to be different based on whatever else they've been doing. Yeah. But, but yeah, so when thinking about like trends for this, and okay, if you were to go to a lab, right, and you wanted to test Hyrox specific stuff, what would you do? You'd have to do erg testing. Erg lactic testing? Lactic testing on the erg? I, I, yeah, I think I'd probably do FTP on everything. Mm -hmm. I think I'd go wattage on everything. I would That's be, where I would start, probably. I would be interested in, yes, for sure. If you can get your zones on the ski, the row, saying you're already like a proficient mover, because yes. on the ski in particular, on both, really. Like you can make big gains just by small tweaks. Yeah. So once you have those tweaks in place and you know that, that, that you've kind of maximized what you can do uh, biomechanically, then understanding your outputs would be very helpful. And now I would love to do that. Just having, getting a test. I mean, I actually thought about reaching out to the dude I did my uh, FTP bike test for. And there's a skier going to row her in there. I'm like, Hey man, just do this and just prick my finger. What's the, you can do it. Right. Right. And figuring out where those would be, I think is interesting so that you, you can like for your approach, I think it'd be very helpful right now so that you know exactly Mm -hmm. It might not be that important for the mixed modal work because it's not that long. <laughs> you know, you might have a general idea of where to pace, but if you're looking to engine build, then it'd be very helpful. Right. So like, what's the best are. I could do? I did a 2K time trial the other day, went 659. Call nice. it 145 pace. On what? The ski? On the row. On the row? Hell yeah. Yeah. That was my first official time sub seven. There's like a whole thing to it. Did it It doesn't suck? matter. Yeah, it, I, I fell asleep putting the girls down to bed. I woke up and decided I'm not working out. It was like 10 at night. I woke up and I was like, you're you're a pile of poop. Don't be like, a bitch. <laughs> what's the worst thing you don't want to do right now? I'm like, a row 2K. I'm like, all right, proved yourself that you want to do it. So I went downstairs. You went straight Goggins on us? Like, hey. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> it just like to spite myself, like prove you actually want to be an athlete anymore. I love that. So like I said, like there's a lot of excuses, but it was my first time sub seven. I'll take it. That's 145 pace. Did you start That's at 145? Seven seconds off that. What? Did you start at 145 or did you? I was like oh. 45, 47, 45, 44 or whatever. Oh, uh, gross. Okay. Uh, that's how I have to time trial. I've got to be able to crank down at the end. If I start bleeding out, I'm out. That, that, but like to start out where you average is a hard way. Like for me on a 2K on, a, on an ERG, I have to start a little bit slower. I went 500, 1,500. At 45, Still. 47, 45. Didn't feel good. Didn't feel good. No, not at all. It wasn't hate your life. Probably the last 250, I went for it. But I was like, I was sitting at a notch below a race the whole time. Okay. But anyways, nice. 145 per five. Add seven seconds to that. Call it threshold. Like, is that threshold work? No. Does 152 make sense for a, a reasonable pace to target for mid high rocks on a good day? Yeah. Maybe. So it's just, it's a logical threshold I'm following. That's about as accurate as I'm getting outside of doing something longer than a 2K time trial. And I'm always going to. There's going to be fade. muscular. Yeah. Like it's just, just not going to sit there long enough. You're not going to ski a row for 10 hours a week so that you can hold a, a race pace for 45 minutes to an hour. It's not going to happen. Right. So being able to test it. But Testing still you would might, be useful. Yeah. Because you might run into that muscular piece, but you're still. You're still getting that lactic byproduct. I don't know. That, that'd be interesting. I would be interested to see Jack's here. So we're going to have to wrap this up because we don't want to talk about this with him. And I would be interested to see what happens. Like run, get, prick your finger, sled push, 
then prick again mm -hmm. and seeing what happens there. Cause you're going to get anaerobic locally, but how that does what that determines globally. Like if yeah. you're able to, to move some of it out or if, and like what that limiter is, is it just strength? Is it muscular? Is it global fatigue? I'd like to see stuff like that, like kind of yeah. less uh, linear movement patterns for it. Yeah. And I think you could test that by going like, you'd put a restrictor on a hip press to like 50% motion or you do a hack squat or something. It's some sort of machine that controls how everyone's using the same muscle group. And I think you do like X percent of your max or just put it at body weight and do like 50 reps, prick, go on the treadmill. And now you have to run to a heart rate limiter and mm -hmm. see like whose pace changes the most off this. Who, who when you get a localized pump and burn is least affected by it at pace. Hmm. Like who retains the highest percent, who shunts quicker, who, you know, wh whatever you want to call it, who has that ability to flip-flop between movements while regenerating and who follows their fatigue throughout? Like who, who's, whose fatigue is it follows? Like mm -hmm. it just never gets away from them. I think that would be a test I would go after as well. Maybe we'll have another hybrid episode down the road, but we got to bring Jack in because we got to get to some race brain Let's stuff. Let's do that. Let's bring him in. That was fun. I didn't talk about shoes for one second. Not one. You're welcome, America. Not one second. I got to get my hands on those Puma Deviate Elite threes. I was reading a review of those today. What does it sound like? Better in every single way. Jack, we didn't talk about shoes at all until you got here. That is a lie. The first thing I hear in my ears is you two talking about shoes. I know that the past hour has just been shoe talk. Not for one second. We didn't, no, we one didn't second. talk about tread on shoes. We didn't talk about what we were wearing around the house. Okay. We, we said, talk... J he said, I have, we did not even say one thing about shoes. I said, that is incredible. And he said, I got to get those DV8 threes. That's where you came in. And yep. That's exactly it. Check the okay. tape. Just Jack, good hello. timing. Welcome. Glad you're How do you boss. not have them? Aren't you a a big deal, High Rocks athlete? You know, I got the Puma Fuse, the like CrossFit shoe, and it's good. I enjoy it. Do you, so you actually have CrossFit style shoes? I had a pair of Noble that were like the Noble Runners, so I could run to the gym That's with the them. Route and then, to go. Yeah, but they're just not good runners, and they're not good gym yeah. shoes. No, yeah. I'm saying for gym shoes. I think you get the trainer version of a CrossFit shoe and that's the best shoe for gym. It just, and this is more, this is like low profile, very stable, a little heavier, but durable. They'll be good. Okay. So yeah, I'm yeah. just, I'm rocking them because it'd be better for squats and stuff. I, I do notice a difference for that. So I like mm -hmm. those Puma on the team. Interesting. I just got some new shoes. What'd so. you get? Yeah, we're not uh, here to talk about this. No. Okay. So normally I, I know I'm, I'm interjecting on the shoe talk. So normally I miss your, I go on running warehouse. If I like a pair and it's on clearance, I'm going to get you, like four of them. So they last for a while. You, I got you see a pair. You like you wait for eight I months. Got the, I got the new model. Of one of them. Yeah, I know. This is crazy. Um, the ultra Rivera fours. So that's the current model instead. Of, and I, I had the twos before really, really like them. And I'm like, you know what? I'm getting the top of the line. Let's go. So Skip that's what the I threes, did. right to fours. Skip the three. Normally, I'd be getting the threes. Like when I got my Google Pixel, the seven was out. I got the six A. I'm not. That's I don't. Right. I don't do that super upgrade. Oh but... come on! I'm. I'm. I can't wait. New iPhones gonna drop in like a couple weeks. Here, I'm gonna be in line. Why waste your money, uh, Rich? New, what's new... What's the average duration of your phone life? How long you keep it? Uh, I have this one for over three, about three years. Okay, so that, all right, three that's years. respectable. Yeah. yeah. Because I got a pair of shoes yesterday. Pixel. You did? Yep. Okay. First pair of shoes I have bought in months. Go on. You sure about this? Yeah. 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 Contrary to popular belief, I don't buy many shoes. I'm in a, a privileged place, oh, Jack. Buy? You buy. bought in months. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I've got shoes coming in. Yeah. I was going to say, you Absolutely. I mean, I got a habit. To, I went yeah. to the outlet store. Found a pair of streak flies. Oh, got them. Have you rocked them? I wore them for the uh, sixty sixty by twenty last night. You like them? 
I don't know if like the shoe is like, I don't put my foot in and be like, oh, that's made for me. But I warmed up in them, ran 400s and cooled down in them. And they felt good for all of it. And that's kind of the, it's They're a place, right? It. It's kind of, it's, it's like a, re, it's like the rebel. Better or worse than the rebel? Uh, for me, it's better because the rebel, I feel like I go through the front of the shoe. Mm. It's not enough. I get like a bad feeling, almost an aroma feeling in my forefoot. The rebel is too soft and flexible in the forefoot. I need a bit of forefoot density. Got you. All right. Let's move along. Let's talk about some things that happened. Did you guys catch any of the CrossFit CrossFit games? I really, I was locked in on the Olympics. They chose a poor weekend to put the CrossFit games. They should have done it next weekend. I watched nothing live. I also watched nothing, nothing live. Uh, and last year, I was at the hotel for Kirk's wedding, and I was like dialed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we have a stupid yeah. wedding to go to. Come on, the CrossFit games are on well, right we now. Locked. So. I, I was so Amy. mad. <laughs> like, you know, that was a, a wedding for one of my friends, brought Amy along for the ride. And we went, we had like a day to hang in, in Minneapolis. And we went to like this brewery and I just sat there and watched the, the 5k, <laughs> the teams, the team's 5k. <laughs> and I was like, could we, could we just 5K. hold on? Could we just hold on for like one second? So the, the weekend definitely had a different feel than typical. I'm sure most of you have heard about the tragedy of Lazar Dukic. Um, we're not necessarily in any type of position to fire off takes about uh, blame or what's going to happen to the organization. We're going to focus on more of what happened during the, the events when it was up and, and moving, uh, and particularly how it pertains to our sport. Most notable. I mean, they had they ran a bunch of times. I, I do have one thing to say on that topic, though. Just I I know we're not going to. Jack's got to take too deep. No, no, no. It it. I mean, it, it's horrible that it happened. Um, that without question is the number one thing. I don't think that they necessarily uh, prepped the way that they should have. But coming from a sport where we have sometimes some pretty long swims and people especially at the top end of the sport have really argued about like, Oh, these stupid life jackets and stuff in hindsight. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing that we've had those. Cause this easily could happen in Lake Tahoe and 40 degree water or West Virginia in a five plus minute swim. We saw like Eugenio Godinez Romero and Ciro basically drowning in Mexico, but they had a life jacket like hanging on the buoy. It, yeah. As much crap as we've given an OCR, it's a good thing that we've had it through the years. For sure. For sure. Um, so they did do, so they ran that first event that was a run into a swim and then they ran on the track, 1600 meters, four laps, Jack. No wheel count? needed. No wheel needed. No the, wheel the, the only issue is, did they call it a 1600 or a mile? I didn't check that. Cause that would be like typical they were, CrossFit. They, they were calling it 1600. 1600. Uh, they wow. did the whole thing. Okay. They did it a side by side. So the winning times for the, Women was 5.30, Tia Tumi, and there was a number of athletes on the CrossFit leaderboard. They don't have it broken because it was a, a blend of two events. They did a 1,600. They had about six minutes to rest. Or I think it was a 12-minute 12 12 minute cap to do 1,600 meter, rest the remainder of the, the 12 minutes, and then it was into like a field sprint with some carries <clears throat> that yeah. took like a minute and change. So there were a couple women under 5.40, which was impressive. Tia won in 5.30, almost on the nose. On the men's side... Ricky Garrard went out and like, did you see, did you watch the, the 1600? Anybody? I saw Tia's it? kick. I, I found a video of it, but went I like really wasn't watching. 32 in. or something. Yeah. His first 200. He was like 67 or something, the wow. first 400. And ended up. And we know f- what that does. <sighs> I mean, Which makes saw, his time more impressive. There's definitely, yeah, we saw, you know, this happened to Ellie St. Pierre in the 1500. She went out a little bit too hard in that. Don't first... go out in 59 for a mile. Yeah. Even though she's one of the most fit and just faded hard. He went out, mm-hmm. broke the field immediately, and kind of cruised to a 455. So maybe he runs 452. Maybe he's yeah. 450. 450. If he's if he, if it's appropriately paced. Uh like we saw in the women's the first heat, they did not pace appropriate. I think they went out closer to they were under 75, I think. That, mm. And then then Tia and her squad paced it really well. But I have some of the – I have the IAAF scoring tables up. Oh, decathlon for these, style. For these two You're runs. doing some prep. Jeez. Prep. All right, so this is – so I guess 
someone explain how these tables work, Jack? I guess this just seems like it's in your your alley. Yeah, pretty much. You take an event uh, that's standard run on track, field, whatever it is, and then you just you earn a certain amount of points based on the performance that you have relative to kind of the world record. You, it's a really really good mark in an individual event would be a thousand. Uh, roughly if you can average 900 to a thousand per event you're like in in the contention for a medal at the olympics basically um and they kind of break that down like if you're in the hurdles a lot of athletes are closer to world class at, at the hurdles than they are at say the shot put just because they're their builds and it's a an event that they can train for and be successful at on the world stage realistically so athletes might score more in the hurdles than they would in the shot put but if you add up their their times over the course of an event. That's kind of where they'll, they'll average like in that eight to 800 to a thousand points for, for decathlon and heptathlon on the high end. But they, they base it off of like what a very good mark in an individual event is. It's a way you can kind of compare times across events or across genders. Like can, age grading, you, but for track performances. Right. So I ran the two winning times here. Uh, Ricky, and it's for a mile on here, so I added two seconds. Is it, what ends up being a difference, 16 to a mile? One point something? 1.8, I think, if yeah, you're so, around five flat pace. Yeah. yeah, so I added two seconds on each of them. So a 4.57, which was the event, and I could even do this for, for what we think he could run. Let's do that. What do you think he'd run, 4.50? I think 4.50 is absolutely realistic with a 67 opener. Right. <laughs> I agree. I mean, maybe he runs 448 with like someone to pace off of. I don't know. He might oh, get yeah, under. 450. He might get under. And, you know, all the th all things considered, this is not the first day of the event. That not This is not the first event of the weekend. There is uh, certainly fatigue at play, but a 450 is worth about 548 points. And it's in Texas. Don't forget that. It's part, Texas. So. It's hot. It's yeah, hot and humid. Hot. So, right. So, there, so on both of these, I don't think this really matters for my argument here. I'm not, I'm not talking. Yeah. I don't really want to talk about the actual uh, performance, but more comparing the genders. What do you think Tia Toomey's time was worth a 532? If Ricky's was, if Ricky's four, or let's actually. We well, too. The, the typical is about a nine to 10% difference across genders. And that's looking like one eleven. So that they're probably pretty similar. I'd say within 40 to 50 points of each other. So it's just under. So I think, lower than I his. think I think Tia's is slightly better than Ricky's. Oh, I think Ricky's is better than Tia's. Uh, Ricky's time, if we say 450, was 548. Tia, if we say 529, 733. Whoa. Okay, that's way, way too generous. Better. Way too generous. Why? Whoa. How could you say that? This is the this is the table. Is it, is it coming up here? Jack's butt. And then the we're talking about IAAF tables, and you're like disagreeing with it. But but if you think about it, so take Ricky's time, subtract a minute, and now you're at four flat, a minute 15, you're at like the world record. You subtract a minute 15 from Tia's time, and that's the world record. They should be pretty equivalent, in my opinion. The 700 versus 548, like that's that's a massive jump. I would I would have been okay with like a 600, but that seems way too big, in my opinion. And this These do get off. worse. They scale worse the bigger they go, but yeah. The yeah, like that's that's we can cover that as well. I'm just saying, in terms of how good these runners are in CrossFit, the women seem to be disproportionately better. Would make sense. Yeah. Where, where was the cluster of the pack? There were a lot of 530 high, right? Because I saw her getting like a, a sprint finish at the end. Or... Yeah, Amy Kringle actually raced it like a track athlete. Sat on the two, swung wide. And tried yeah. to tried to pass, but T is just a beast. So there was like a sprint, yeah. there was a group of them, and there was athletes under four, under five forty, in the uh, heat before. And uh, mm -hmm. Al Alexis Raptus kicked with uh, eight hundred to go because she thought she was almost done. Really? Crossed the finish line, stopped, realized had another lap. Old school, like, that's like oh man, high school freshman stuff. High school indoor, yep. high school indoor. It's hard to keep track of the the laps in indoor. To be oh. fair. We saw so, a lot of that on our 160 meter indoor track. Oh my! Talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that's impossible. Two mile. So. Woo. so there were a lot more women close to Tia than there were men close to Ricky. So this just is, is and what we've seen in High Rocks is having these women athlete come, women athletes come out and do 
pretty well, almost with no training. Mm -hmm. Did you I think take a look at Ricky's running time at uh, when he did high rocks? It was not good. What do you think it was? Um, he ran 61 and change. I think it was closer to like 34. That was 33 mid or high. 34.22. And his Yeah. overall time was 62.21. 62. 62.21. Oh, okay. And he is the best runner by like a lot, it turns out. Yeah. I mean, there's other guys who are better at the longer stuff. Like, where did Ricky get in that lake event? But, but he's not, he really isn't a very good, he was fourth in that lake event and he's not a very good swimmer. Um, He's their outlier for endurance currently. Yeah. Seemingly so. And this, I think this just is more proof around things we've talked about before that high level CrossFit athletes on the male side won't come in and do very well. Won't, won't be able to push toward elite 15. Yeah. But I think, I think Tia might be able to come in and be on that podium. I think she can get third like tomorrow. What is it about women that they can retain a higher percent or build endurance or speed or whatever better while becoming power athletes compared to men? Is it that men build too much muscle? Or is it that the men are disproportionately shorter than the women? Like what, 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 what is it that the female CrossFitters tend to just be superior endurance athletes? Why, why is it? That's an interesting observation. I think that men come in with more muscle mass because of the Bro culture, sports maybe. that, yeah, Yeah. and the sports that men play in high school, like these are football players, these are like wrestlers, Mm you -hmm. know, maybe they bodybuild in college, right? Where culturally that's not, it, it's changing for sure, but it hasn't necessarily been a, a goal of women to put on muscle mass. So I think they do just come in a little bit bigger. If you look at a lot of the athletes who end up going into CrossFit, it's not many people who are pure skinny runners back in high school. Like you, I think that they had a strength background Mm-hmm. there, but I think that the, the movement it, I think strong is better than skinny these days. It, it or it's at least encouraged. Uh, that's what I'm seeing among a lot of female athletes, which I think is a, a good, a good reversal of what it used to be. Yeah. Totally. So, oh, I had something else on the, on the women's. Well, until you get there, how do you feel the women compared to the men on the runs in, cro- in high rocks versus the rest of the stations? Are they closer to the men running wise than they would be at any other version of the men's race? I mean, we, we have our issue with wall balls. They're going to be faster just because gravity, you know, you have that extra foot that doesn't happen there. So they're going to look faster. I'm saying on it's, wall it's balls a bad comparison, or, but if you oh. put the women out in the men's race on their weights, would their strongest station be the run? Uh, some, <laughs> I think Megan Lauren. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I, I guess what I'm asking is, do we have that in our sport too? Hmm. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, d- does High Rocks really have like strong, strong athletes? But they still skew so far on the endurance side. Like they're pretty strong, but not. They get Not dead these last dudes. in pretty much every every CrossFit event at at the games. Yeah. Even Meg, who has a powerlifting background, should should probably do well on like the bench. I bet compared to. A lot of women, but I don't know how should necessarily stack up in like the clean ladder or something. This like I Chad. Always, we'll have to talk Chad yeah. after this. Yeah. Hmm. Hold your horse. I always like to to ask the question to find out who's actually superior at being a hybrid athlete. Who's closer to who? Like are we closer to their lifting or are they closer to our running? Uh, and Ricky's well, certainly closer to our running than we are to his lifting. Well I guess like how many women in the Elite 15 you think it'd run like five under five thirty? Probably half. I I would say every single one of them. Five, five, under five thirty. One is single good. mile. Yeah. I'd confidently bet my life on half. half. And I don't know how much I'd I'd stray above that before I'd start to get real nervous. I think that that's fair. I think it's probably three quarters, but I could I could. bet my life on half 
Let me pull it up really fast. Just want, let's just look at these names. We don't Either way, to... my question stands. Are we better at their sport or are they better at ours? Oh, they're better at ours. Right. Yeah, and for sure. That, I don't think there's a question. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, Once you get gymnastics movements and overhead weight, like it's it's not even debatable. We're pathetic compared to CrossFitters. Yeah. Yeah. How many How many dudes do you think could run under... Uh, say we give him a 450. Say if we say we Maybe give him a 448. 15, I would say all but like two or three. So if we're saying that the 450 is the worst mark according to the scoring table, but more guys can obtain that, it's I don't know. I Maybe I, I'm selling the winning like... short. But what Johnson probably John? couldn't, right? He was in Elite 15. He has been. Has been. Graham, I think would have a hard time. Bo, I think would be I think that'd be pretty close to a PR win, probably the same. Colin. I'm not gonna run that. I don't know, but not much faster. No, yeah, that's true. He's run sub five, right? I have no idea. I saw. Maybe I'm inaccurate. Maybe. Who cares? We're just out here talking. Well, what's the top end? So Rankovic, 410. 410 easy. 410 in training. What Sand, about the rest Sandy's of the guys? Sandy's 405. I don't know. What do you, what's the fastest thing Hunter's ever run? Has he ever broken 440? Nah. Probably not. He probably just never run many miles. That's, that's what I mean. Probably most of these dudes have not run many miles. Right. But could. If you put them all on a track. We saw some of it. Jack's out of here. Later, He's tired of speculation. His, his, his boss, his boss, hit him back up. Hey, where are you? Yeah, he's like, show me your screen right now. <laughs> uh, we saw some of it for OCR stars. Yep. Yeah, it's hard Kent, to run a Kent fast run? mile. That was less than ideal setup where you guys had. But what did Kent run that day? Like the high four forties, right? That was like forty. 442 or something. 42, low 440s. Something like that. But it was like 30 degrees and windy. windy. Yeah, I know. I know. It was less than ideal for sure. But it goes to show like the margins are thin in a mile. Yeah. Like a mile's not a good test of fitness. <laughs> it's a good test of how much you prepared for a mile. And this is also worth noting when it comes to CrossFit athletes is that their times will degradate heavily the longer the event goes just because yeah. they are so muscular that they, they don't follow like the same kind of table or progressions that we could expect from an endurance athlete where it's like, okay, you did a mile yeah. here, so we can project that to your 5K. No one's breaking 18. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's actually good. Let me let me pull that up. Well, we, we can't because they didn't run a 5K. We could compare it to their 4.5, yeah. 5,000 yard. Yeah, we can compare it to the 4.5. That's actually, yeah. Uh, but they don't have their freaking times on here. Let's Jack would know what they see. ran. He was embroiled in that. Yeah, that he was put, boots on the ground. That put Jack on the map. For what? The the 5,000 yard. Do you remember what oh, their times yeah. were? For it that? was like 1640 or so. That's not equivalent to a 455. And I don't know what's going on with my video. and every, Like my computer, Rich started talking. He sounded like some demon. And then it, my computer restarted. So I don't know what's going on. But Come on, dude. Demon lord. Yeah. The oh, so yes, so a, a 448 God. would be the. Are you got something covering the the camera? I have no idea what's going. What on. What are you wearing right now? Looks it. <laughs> anyway, what is a what's a 448 equivalent in for 5K? BK is up your alley. I mean, my PR I I had a 1440 or a 447 as a junior in the mile or the 1600, uh, and I would I think I was like 17. 20 ish at that I point. I bet they'll call it like a 16 teen. 1630. 1630. Yeah. On the V dot. Yeah. I don't buy it, but I mean, it's a, it's as good as anything. Where the, we, we said like the best, what it was six, it was a 5,000 yards. It was 1640. It was 1640. So you got to add another three and a half minutes, almost four minutes onto that. Yeah, but we can just get the equivalent. Um, I'll I'll just pull up the the. Course. I mean, Ricky okay. can break twenty. We know that. Yes. So... Yeah. But so... is he breaking nineteen? 
Mm. Maybe. Probably. Is he breaking 18? No. There we go. So okay. a 4.5 so, kilometer is equivalent to so a 526. I've got, the, I've got the post. So 1736 is what, what they ran. And so that that's what oh, it actually yeah, was. Sorry. Converts to a 1925 5K. So about yeah. two minutes for most people. Yeah. So like you said, that degradation is severe. It's incredible. Like, yeah, even that, even if it's like, yeah, 1736 for 4.5 K would be a 545, which is slower than the women ran. Yeah. Considerably. Yeah. Yeah. So these dudes, they just, would the women run? Jackie got that there. Uh, oh, okay. So actually it was a 1639 men's time, 18, 1816 is what it converts to. And then 1748 should have been a 1933 last year. Those are the real equivalent times so 1748 mile for for, for that equivalent for miles, five, five 5k 50. yeah the 1748 for 4.5 right for 4.5 yep yes 4.56 yep uh that's about a 550 where we saw athletes running 530 for yeah. for the women yeah yeah but but that's the thing it i i feel like the mile is short enough where running economy doesn't factor in and they can you can use just your anaerobic fitness to kind of get through that. They can just blast it. Yeah. It's the meeting ground. Yep. Stretch it out to two miles. It's it's a different story, but they're Stretch so... it out to 2K and it already starts, I think. <laughs> they're so fit. It, it's I, I, The way that I think of it is say that you're supposed to do like 400 meter repeats and you're like, I'm just going to blast this open in 200 and your average time looks real good, but you just banked all that time at the beginning. You're not really like running it the way you should and it's probably the same for once you stretch out the distance here for yeah. a lot of larger athletes it's crazy impressive at their size but we know the truth this was better than than anticipated for sure we talked to meg yeah. on rmr about it she was like nah these girls aren't gonna do shit <laughs> but they continually show us that they kind of are the fittest on earth even though we don't like yeah. to admit that like they they are the sport has evolved into it totally these are They're good so- athletes they're like the Dylan Scott of the power world where he did so <laughs> much other things that he just got really fast at running. <laughs> now he also did a lot of running throughout, but like his running has improved via all the other things he's done as well. Totally. And theirs has too. Like they can, if you go out and say, I'm a sub five minute miler, you're top 1% on this earth. Yeah. Like they have, they have engined themselves into being a very respectable one mile runner. It's worth noting that Tia's background is cross country and track and field and that she got into a lot of times we don't see endurance athletes running runners in particular translate very well into CrossFit just because of the movement ability uh, and just the lack there of movement required to be good Mobility, at yeah. running. Yeah, like shoulders are rounded forward, hips are super tight, it takes a lot of time to undo it, but Tia just dedicated herself to it so heavily that she was able to overcome she so didn't the, just overcome she competed in the olympics in 2016 and, and, and in weightlifting in yeah. olympic weightlifting so <laughs> so she's disgusting. the best runner in the field and an a, a true <laughs> olympic caliber lift like that's stupid she's a real deal and but that's yes. what if you have that base of fitness from a young age it can carry you a long mm-hmm. way uh, so she's the answer to Jack and I on the Utah coverage saying like, Lauren, does this performance just cement her as one of the absolute all around fittest people on earth? I still think yes. Yeah. But Tia is it's the, in that yeah. realm as well. On a different level. Differently. Yeah. 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 But goodness. Well, well, let's look at Lauren's times recently that since you just mentioned her, she has put herself out there on the roads. She's averaged like, I think it was six flat, six to one pace for a 15K. At altitude? Yeah. I, and it, I, I, it was like a 122 or 124 half marathon. What's she average? Uh, I thought it was six to one pace for a 15K. So like <laughs> nine miles yeah. or so. That sounds about right. Let's turn on the altitude No converter. clue on the elevation change and stuff, but. So that would put her mile at 517. Okay. So and I would think Lauren would beat these women. And, and I think she ran 520 something at OCR stars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But just imagine what would happen if you went to like a local all comers track meet 
in the adult open division. You're like, hey, we're going to let this girl come and join us. She went to the last Olympics in Olympic lifting. Mm -hmm. Are you okay that she's in the first heat with you? And she comes walking up to the line and every single one of them is like, what is she doing here? And then to be like three laps in and she's still running 530 pace. You're like, what have I been doing all of my life to not be faster than an Olympic weightlifter? <laughs> I mean, that's no different than when Hunter used to line up on the start line and just go up mountains with world-class runners. And it's like, how does a guy this big do what he's doing? Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it was correct. Uh, 601 pace for a 15 K. So nice. And I do just want to say, this isn't a knock on Hunter. We never had world-class mountain runners. We had a few people that used to be come down to OCR and a few people that started in OCR, like John become one. But we never had an active world class mountain runner. Max King, Fair. Cody Moat winning national level. At a Max minimum. King never did anything in OCR. Yeah, Spartan, what? two world titles. We Spartan. talked about. Yeah, we got to. We got to see. You were there. On the list Not cross country yeah. steeplechase. Yeah. BK, what are your takes on Chad? I think it's pretty good. What was your What was your time? Uh, forty six. Forty six mid. Yeah, And I think after I said, based on time, at least a minute or two comes off with just strategy. So what did I say? I thought they could do 40 to 42 at the absolute highest. I would think it, their setup was probably a little slower. Okay. Simply because they had to turn around. What do you mean yeah. by that? I didn't watch did you, this Did one. you see it? They stepped no. up twice. They had two 220-inch bo boxes like kind of like – in a small pyramid. So they like stepped a pyramid. up to one, stepped up to another, had to turn around, step down, step down, step oh, up, step up. Yeah, that's not great. I would think it's a little slower just because you have to turn around. Yeah. But you would think it's so steps up in a row. If I, I thought they could slower. do 40 to 42 in mid-competition, not fresh, with a slow setup, they went 43. That seems pretty solid to me. Yeah, you Bracken, you're, in the group chat, you said 42 is my prediction for the top men. Pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Just grit. Man, was that stupid to watch, though. Oh, my <laughs> God, was it dumb. Having it be, like, I at least figured they would have it so that even if you move the box, like, six inches forward every, like, I don't know, 20 steps, you could see <laughs> the race, but you couldn't see anything. It was like, what? okay, they're stepping up and turning around and stepping down. No one's going any faster than they were before. Yep. I have no idea where anybody is. If they can have a barbell ladder with weights, they can afford putting out 10 boxes. Oh, yeah. Like they or could have, done, like I said, just like Do 100. 100, go down, yep. 100 each, come back. Five <laughs> yeah. boxes. That is that is a, a rounding error compared to all the plates they have at this competition. Get a few carpenters. You can, you can get that done with some wood boxes. Not no, very it, fun to watch. It did Ricky roll his ankle? I thought I saw a post on that. Or I don't know. I've so, be, I just because see. of I, they wanted it to be some kind of twist. BK. I think they just wanted it to be like a little bit different. Yeah. I don't know why. It, it just different than what? No one does this in competition. <laughs> like we're tired of all these box step up competitions. <laughs> no, this this is just you. I think they wanted it to be something over. They had that box step up uh, controversy at in like quarterfinals for judging like seeing what a good rep is so i think they wanted it to go over something so they didn't necessarily need to see like hips and neck and yeah. chin and the okay thing. so since i didn't watch fill me in what did they end up using for weight and what was their technique that the winners used for doing this was i think it, it was ruck? it was a ruck yep okay and uh i think it was yeah what 40 and 30 I think it's uh, whatever. 40, four, no, I thought it was 45, 35. 45, 35. It, it had a five at the end of it. I'm, um, I'm just trying to find a clip of it. One dude, the dude got to 50. So suck on that. Get that. Get your weight up. Sandbag. Yeah, but you had a sandbag. Right. The dude sandbag. who got second had a bit of a faster descent. He was kind of skipping his way down. Uh, but everybody else was kind of doing the same thing where they were stepping up and then kind of like descending. They power backwards. hiking up? Uh, they push off at uh, him? No. All right. I don't know if that was legal or not. Here's some here's some footage, Bracken. See that? Oh, so they're not judging hip no. extension much. I Get think up. that's why they wanted it to be over something. And then you go up and now do a pivot at the top and turn over. So the turnaround's why I think it's a little slower. 
and maybe it's did a you have faster. to turn around or could you go down forward you can go down forward i think actually i'm not sure but i think i think you did have i don't, I don't know if they no i don't so think the they ups had, faster that way up is faster for sure but the descent might be a little slower uh yeah, everyone's going sure. down backwards i have yet to see someone just the dude in second kind of was going sideways he was kind of like skipping and you have to have two steps on or two feet on each level you can't just single because that would be like hitting the ground with only one foot so. yeah okay i'm not so what do you guys any... think have you tried this yet nope <laughs> and, not gonna huh? not nah. gonna i retire undefeated and untied in this group there you go jack jack wants that smoke. i'll do the he, incline he wants all that smoke dude he's not afraid of bk for one i could come out second. any day of the week and take you on the incline Ooh. come come here let's do it come that to orlando it, seems like you're not doing that anymore i guess we'll have to wait till chicago, chicago. That seems i am not doing orlando yeah sad i was so i was so pumped doing my workout i'm like oh man i'm watching track and field at the olympics right now on the treadmill i'm gonna blow by bracken just like cole hawker blew by everyone no high rocks like, is your chance to beat me yeah not deca yeah De deca's two in my wheelhouse pretty quick I, i've yet to see it so you don't need to a lot of talk R rich I'll is the talk. rich is a world champ i've made it twice brack has never attempted it that's all i'm saying yeah, i understand this is a, a tenuous position to take you stand by it i back yeah. me let's go all right 2025 it's happening maybe not at this rate <laughs> the women in chad did 47 47 flat so yeah, I don't really know what's what many of the stories out here. I didn't follow it very closely. Like I said, it was such a bummer that engaging with it in really any way, I just I didn't feel compelled to. So I'm sure there's stories on what happened to the athletes. Um, the top two athletes from last year, Jeff Adler <clears throat> and Laura Horvath, decided not to compete. Yeah. Um, which I can understand. I mean, I, I can understand anyone's uh, choice on any of this. Did so his brother just, also? He did not him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was going to say, uh, so I don't know what happened all the way throughout. So this isn't really our world anyway. So it's lose, lose for everyone from that point on. Oh yeah. Should, should they have postponed it like a week, you a can't. month, whatever? You can't. You can't I know you can't because it's booked out, but the worst part about it all is the online community. It was just like, <sighs> it was exactly what you'd expect from social media. Mm -hmm. But it was, it just reiterated like the worst of social media is the worst of us. <laughs> and it was, it's just like, I hate to be the person like, oh, it's so disappointing. But it was disheartening to even, it was depressing to read the comments. They took a, a horrible situation and they made it worse for both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just being out for blood right away or being like, just, yeah. it's, 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 so, it's just very strange. And the, uh, and like one thing that, that, CrossFit has a major disadvantage for this is that if this was a triathlon, which it, this stuff happens during even a marathon, this stuff happens, the event happens and then it finishes. So there's no question of it like, Oh, does this, should this not count? You know, like you can't cancel something cause it's already over. Right. And then CrossFit mm -hmm. was faced with this position that other sports yeah. typically wouldn't be faced. Like if this happened in decathlon in the Olympics, do you think they would have canceled the decathlon? I mean, this ha we had it in the Buffalo Bills game uh, against the Bengals with Mar Hamlin. They didn't they cancel just, the season, though. They canceled the game. They didn't make it up after. They yeah, just but they didn't cancel the it. season. Uh, yeah, I guess this is the culmination of the season. So it's tough, and I guess this is more of just a PSA rather than a stance. Yeah, for people for the next time something like this happens, and you're tempted to be part of the comments. My personal view on this is through Lisa's eyes, my wife, who lost her little brother in an accident. And unfortunately, Facebook existed at this time. Mm. And all the comments on the news report, the police report, the family's posting, right away, people were doing this. They're making assumptions. They're leaving comments. They're attacking the parents. They're attacking the kids. They're making assumptions and then making statements because of their assumptions they're making. And it was horrific for the family to go through this and then have to see people fight online about it, hmm. even if they're not taking shots at you, which they always are, at least half of them. It just takes a bad situation and makes it 
insanely worse. So the best thing everyone can do in these situations is just sit on it for a little bit. Sit on your takes, wait till everything comes out. There will always be enough time for a witch hunt. We will always have time for that in this society. There will always be time enough to run someone out of office or get them out of their position. But just keep in mind that everyone who's personally involved with this, their life is in shambles mm -hmm. and you're about to just light it on fire. So maybe just, just sit out for a little bit. Right. Justice is going to run its course. It's going to happen. Just give it a, give it a break. Doesn't have anything to do with you. No. And you can't change anything. You can only make it worse. You can't help anything. Even if you say something nice, people are going to take your comment and say something bad, which now there's something bad out there that the family is going to read that only exists because you said something. Like it's not even your fault, but you enable it. So just stay out of it. Stay out of it. Agreed. All right. So Olympics wrapped up. And this is this is great news for everybody listening because we won't talk about track and field for at least another year now. But we're going to talk about it right now. We're talking about it. <laughs> but we got a couple minutes to talk about it, so we're going to talk about it. Jakob, huh? BK, I oh. thought about you had that you had that take about him just being he's going to be harder to take down in the 5K for the rest of his career than in the 15. And I think you're right, man. It, that his strength is just next level. You talked about people running below their threshold, like Palio. He has the highest threshold pace or fastest and the fastest 1500 PR. What you don't, what do you do to that? The guy ran 1248 in his early twenties and he's run 326. Like there is not a race that you can get rid of him that he can't close. It wasn't even that slow of a race and he closed in 150. The movie like, I think he can go 5K, 10K for the rest of his career and go unchallenged. Should he drop the 1500? If there was no ego and it was just machines, he would just click off 5K, 10K, 5K, 10K, 5K, 10K and retire the greatest runner of all time because you would take six people to out to run him out of a race. He's won European cross. I don't know what distance that is. 10. But that's not a track. He's run eight and 10K. Okay. But we haven't and seen him on the track. And it's the same thing. He sits there casually and then just decides to go up. and it makes world-class runners look like they don't have a kick. And he was not all out. No, he was kind of chilling, man. That's gross. Yeah. Our boy Grant Fisher did that work too. Oh Same goodness. strategy. I'm just going to be here. And then when it's time to go, I'm going to go. I thought he was going to get dropped over the last, that move that happened at 500, but then battled back, which was crazy. Uh -huh. Craig and I just talked about this, but the fact that he doesn't have a nasty gear got him that gold. Because everyone with nasty surplus gears used it with 500 to go, and he's like, I have nothing else. But then he didn't fade down the home stretch, and they did. Yeah, right. But he was just rewarded for being there again. He did it again. It, real question is, is he the best American distance runner of all time at this point? If his career like, ends now... He's on par with a bunch of people. But, like, look at his accolades. Who is? Multiple... Are we saying Galen? I mean, with the marathon? I mean, his PRs are faster than well, Galen, and he had, I, I know it. Super shoes. He has super one shoes. Olympics. We have multiple people with one or two Olympics. We have a marathon. We have a 5K. We have an 800. We have 1,500 runners. We have Galen with a marathon and a 10K. Where he has 10K a medal. He he got on the 10K with Mo Farah. Yeah. So two different Olympics. So right now he's right up there and you could say yes. But if he did, has even one more cycle, it's like ironclad. It's done. It's his. He has yeah. both records? Yeah. Five and 10? I, I think the 3K also indoors. Mm. And didn't he also, I know it, it, this isn't like all time great, but like I, I, he had some amazing high school results. Did he win Foot Locker or NXN back in the day? I know he's a sub four minute miler. Where he wasn't good was college. He was good, good. but not great. Good. He didn't have this yeah, kick. Stanford. Yet. He yeah. wasn't. He didn't clean everyone's clock. Galen did. Yes. In college, Galen still probably has the vote, but I would support a vote for Grant. But if he does it's get anything, it's else, getting there because it's, it's like Grant. Prior to this, he had like a fifth and an eighth or tenth at last Olympics in the five and the ten k, and now he has two medals. And then I think Galen Rupp got fifth in the five k that one time when. 
he he got his medal in the 10k so it's like their next best one is also on par it's 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 a good argument at this point i think galen galen stretches it out because he had a sub 350 indoor mile and he no just 350 oh it was it was three i thought it was three four but now all of his track times were set in victories yes i don't want to get too far down that but like he he's a few seconds faster in this era but he gives he gets credit for me for paving the way grant has done everything faster i know but times are going to get faster right but he can't be punished for being faster no no yeah i mean is today's era deeper than it used to be yeah it's definitely and, deeper and he's beating people who are you know, just as I know Bekele like was around when when Galen Rupp and Mo Farah and stuff. Like, I understand that the era was very competitive back then, but I feel like the it it just the ranks filled in so much over the past few years. America's way better worldwide. It's yes. I, I can't really say. I don't really know. Across the board, the times are deeper. There's more people sub twelve fifty. There's more people sub twenty six forty. Like it's just across the time, it's faster. And yet at the top, there's still always one person that's a better championship racer than everyone else. So it's faster and you still have a championship racer to contend with. So it's, I maybe, maybe I just talked to myself into it. He's because he matched what Galen did in Tokyo or is it Beijing? Uh, London. London. Was that London? It was, yeah, Mo Farrow. Yeah, London and then crowd. he went yeah. and then he did Rio. So he already exceeded the London games for Galen because Galen was two, four, I believe two, yeah. five. I thought he was fifth in the other one. Two, five. Yeah. yeah. And we've got Fisher's results this year. Yeah. Okay. Cause he got third in the 10 K. Yeah. He was in the 2012 Galen was second in the 10, seventh in the seven, five, okay. seven. Well, in three, three. Rio, he was third in the marathon, fifth in the 10 K. Okay. Pretty that good. Rio Olympics is a marathon is mind blowing to me because three athletes had Vaporfly prototypes and they went one, two, three. <laughs> Everyone else was in legacy shoes. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Whoops. 20, 2016 is the, the bookend of fair running versus shoe technology. No, it's still fair. If everyone gets access to it. Yeah, they do. Who doesn't? Yeah. No, I, I, I see your point. I'm, my last indoor workout, I was running K's and there was some woman doing like, I don't know, 930 pace, just recovery run in vapor flies. Huh. Wearing like Lulu that. leggings, like everyone's got them. Hell yeah. But there was a time where, like Jack is saying, where it was just Nike and these other athletes who had shoe deals with whatever, Brooks, Saucony, and there wasn't anything couldn't, available. Couldn't do it. Yeah. It's like, they just have to break their deal here or, or Most what? Most of them just wore them and removed the logo. As they should. Like, that's what, if your sponsor cared about your results. But there was a yeah. one year gap where it, Nike ran the world. Mm-hmm. Yep. Two years, maybe. And the OG Alpha Flies are still the best. Yeah. Can't yeah. be taken down. But... And the Vapor Fly hasn't gotten any faster. No. All right. Back, back to racing instead of shoes. Uh, that 1500, we left the broadcast just abruptly. It's like, hey, that race is starting. Oh, yeah. That was a week ago. Five minutes. That was the best uh, choice was, we've made all year. Totally. That was such a good race. Once once Jakob went to the front at the beginning, I'm like, oh, he means Here business. This this is this is gonna be a race of all races. What do you think was gonna happen rounding with 600 to go or so? You think he had it? 600, I thought he had it. At 400, it was he'd already lost. Yeah, I thought he was gonna be able to be strong enough to outlast everybody at that pace. Mm-hmm. I thought at quote? least one of them. It, his what? Mm, I'm not sure. What he said. Well, he said it, he, he there had never been an environment like that, that much energy. He said he felt so good. He didn't realize how hard he was working. Hmm. Yeah. It's like, I just thought I was running. Like So someone like him, who's done more workouts than anyone else, who's raced probably more than anyone else in that field, even he couldn't quite handle the adrenaline surge of that Olympic stadium. Like he, can you imagine being that good and not being able to feel the pace? He's like, I just feel great. I just, and then just it, casually went out in 54 9 or something. Yeah. Like, what? He said, that was not my plan. I couldn't feel the pace. <laughs> yeah. Dude, in Hawker's race, it wasn't extremely clean. He kind of got caught yeah. up in the field at 
around 300 or so and had to make a bit of a move to, to close a gap. And then on that final stretch, he like ran that up on Yako's back. disrupted at 110. Yeah. And was still had the strength to, to re-engage and have something more at that pace. Him doing the 5K, I think, helped his strength so that he could last a lot longer in the 15K. I think that that was the difference maker here because we yeah. knew his devastating kick all these years. That's that's his trademark. He's been doing it since high schools and in college. And I think that just having that extra strength definitely paid off. It was everything. Mm-hmm. And I think he's spoken about that, about the strength part of mm-hmm. it. That was a big focus. He called that he could win this. And he said, I did what I did off of being like a 13 old guy. Now I'm his a prior sub-13 results, guy. you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And Yarid, still that guy, man. I thought he, he almost had Kerr. That would have been crazy to go 1 2. 1, one 3 5 is crazy enough. Crazy. Yeah. Hobbs didn't have a bad race. I've got lost Hobbs in the shuffle. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's With like a, a good fifth result. Place finish. At like, 328, 329. They're also like a top, 330. Yeah. He's not like a top three or four time. The US. whole top 10 in the U.S. just like got decimated. Yeah. I was looking, I was, it, was, it was fun looking back at that list, like a Leo Man- Manzano on there. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Who else was on there that, that, that I forgot? Leo's a dog. Bernard Lagat. Sydney Marie. Yeah. yeah, Sydney Marie's still on there. It, he I, still is? I think so. 10? Wow. I think so. Okay. Uh, I, I'm trying to think. Alan Webb, is he, is he on there anymore? He's still yeah, on you're there. You're 327, right? Centro? Mm-hmm. No, Webb didn't run 327. He ran maybe en route. But I don't think that that counted. Yeah. Uh, that was great, absolute yeah. highlight. Uh, I watched that race a couple times now, so I mean that's gonna definitely be the highlight from and at the Rooks, the Olympics. Yeah, I, was, I literally I jumped off dog. my seat during the fifteen k or during the fifteen hundred. I oh I me was, too, yeah, me too. I was losing it. But. Steeple too. I had I I was behind with that. Can't hit me up. He's like, dude, you watch a steeple? I think it was crazier than the 15. I was like, let's relax. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Then, then it was. <laughs> yeah. Amy came down. I was like, Did you, have you watched a steeple yet? And I think she had seen something on social media about dude getting hurt. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, I don't really want to watch it. And I was like, don't spoil this. Yeah. Please go away. And uh, yeah. I watched it and it was Kenneth Rooks taking it with 400 to go. Ugh. He, I think he has the best hurdle form I've ever seen in a steeple. But probably the worst running for him. Worst running. He looks awful as a runner. <laughs> he for yeah. sure has the worst disparity between the two. It's and crazy. he his hurdling's good, but he lands looking awkward. But he 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 hurdles like a hurdler. Like his yeah. arm his arm motion is, and he drives so hard off of that water barrier that yeah. he mm-hmm. has momentum moving yeah. forward. That is such a difference maker. Yep. He made a decision with five hundred to go when the field bunched up momentarily. And he caught back up rather than exhaling. He just kept his effort. And that one decision was like, it, it changes his life. Cause then it gave him the ability to say, all right, I'm just going to go for it. But if he had yeah. taken a second to be like, Oh, I'm back in it. Then it's done. It's really smart. Everyone had the get, chance to, he's the yeah. only one who did it. You're going to get caught up in a field of people. Like you're clearly not the fastest guy out there. If you leave it to 200, yeah. El Bacali is blown by you. And and yet he Jeremy, made yeah. up ground on Bacali the last few strides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was reeling him in it on like the, after that last barrier, I was like, there's no way this is happening. I know. But, yeah. G- Germa probably wins if he doesn't hit I that hurdle. So. The speed at which he clipped it, he was going to be in first place four more steps later. Oh yeah. And that's probably why I clipped it. He's probably never run over a hurdle that fast. <laughs> that fast. Yeah. He was running like, 410 pace all of a sudden and just like oh faster than that yeah 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 when you bounce your head off anything Ugh. that's the dangerous one is he okay i look like he's a couple days later chatting. yeah yeah but <laughs> he looked bad but it's a knockout it was that was a ko for sure the problem is that this is a sport with no like roll cage built up in an athlete there's no musculature built up to handle side to side force there's uh, no neck muscles there's no traps there's <laughs> there's nothing no. that's been built to help steady the head and it was just right off the track that's tough yeah yeah right because that's the one that nfl quarterbacks get concussions mm. off of 
mm. when they the hit their head yeah. off the turf, mm-hmm. and that's with a helmet on. Yeah, that yeah, that was, was, ro- was th- that was the worst fall I've ever seen. And uh, like you see people trip on regular hurdles, not steeplechase equivalent barrier, and that was nasty. Nasty. Yeah, but I'm he probably, looking... probably would have won that race. So yeah, Rooks maybe so. gets, maybe gets third. Bakali again. I don't want to say Lux because he gets himself into it, but he lucked himself out of a bad situation because Bakali ran his worst championship race I've ever seen. He's usually yeah. like a genius at getting to where he needs to be. And he kept, it was like they were deciding to put him in bad spots and he couldn't get out of it. Yeah. Talking about some tactics, <clears throat> I was frustrated with, oh my God, I'm forgetting the name. Who won the marathon? Safan Hassan. Ben, oh. Uh, I was frustrated watching her in that uh, 10K. I was like, She's doing the exact same thing that she did in the 5K. She's just like sitting in the back, yeah. waiting, buying her time. And then when it when it stretched out, she wasn't in contention and close enough to have anything to do with the front one or two runners and finished in third. But that was going to win regardless. And she didn't I mean, even she save didn't herself. Even, she did not even try to. to I don't know. What do you I, mean? I don't know. Did you watch she, What I'm saying is that if there, I agree with you, that's how it looked. Yeah. And I'm torn. It's either that or if there was a place where marathon training is going to show up, it's going to be not quite able to hang at the highest of paces. But if you get to the end with her speed, she might just have the ability to snap into a kick. But, but she, she, I think she was struggling. There. She just no, meddled she in the 5K. So she has the speed due she to a closed, kick. Yeah. But I don't know if she could hang with that. That was a slow 10K pace. relative to what they could have done earlier this year. She would have had to have been at least in third to fifth when the moves happened, but she just like mm-hmm. wasn't. I think and, she was doing the minimal amount of work yes. to save her body for the marathon 40 hours later or whatever it was. And knowing that she has a devastating kick that probably at, after how bad Sakai looked already during the meet, it was probably only going to be Chibet and maybe one to two more athletes who would give her a problem. Yeah. And that's where uh, after the marathon, I was like, oh, you know, it's better than like, I guess two, two third. Two bronze and a gold is, is like pretty good. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been silver, silver. <laughs> probably. Maybe. Silver, maybe. Silver, maybe yeah, maybe nothing in the marriage. She wouldn't have won yeah. either. Probably yeah. not. Probably not. But she didn't even com- – it didn't even seem like she was competing for it. Lifetime, to your though, point. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say lifetime, she has two golds from last Olympics and now two bronzes and another gold. So not a bad career so far. No, yeah. but I hated watching. I was like, she's not going to try know. again and just happened exactly the way that it happened yeah. earlier. It's like, all right, maybe she was cool with bronze. Well, and to your defense, historically in her career, when she loses the race, it's because she's too disconnected. She does the Mo Farah, Jakob Ingebrigtsen thing where she jogs in the back for a long time. Yeah. And then she wins when she moves up, gets in position and crushes people. And she loses when she moves up too late. So that is her MO. When, fall, when she loses, down. it's because she's too It works back. until it doesn't. Yeah, and she's at that point of her career where it's like these athletes up front are fast. Mm-hmm. Fast. Yeah. Did who, who was the second run place? the most oh yeah. Befuddling Olympic games you've ever watched. Trying was... to do that triple is aggressive and not doing well in any of them. She had the worst conservation of energy I've ever watched <laughs> in someone trying to triple. And maybe the worst tactics I've watched out of someone who should win some races. I don't Yeah. She must have just not been all the way there because she is. I mean, she has a record. She's a 14 flat 5K. She ran like someone who didn't think she could get tired. <laughs> that it was bizarre. It was so stupid. I mean, she did that. And didn't she do that in the World Championships? Was that last year or two years ago where they went out in like 58 or something and it worked for her? Yeah, but she'd already run that five in the 10. Yeah. And an extra five. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I I can't I can't put any rationale to it. Yeah. And that ruined yeah. Ellie's race. Yeah. People are saying that she ran a bad race. She went in to do what she to do what Grant Fisher did. They had the same strategy. Yeah. What well, was just it by very... the time she realized how fast they were going, it was too late to do anything. Was it, was it just like what Jakob was like, I just couldn't sense the energy, or do you think the guy was like, Well, here's the only chance that I can make sure that Faith Kipigon can't can't yeah. have her kick. Probably the latter, because she's done that before. 
Yeah. Yeah. I just felt bad for Ellie because she ran the right race. Mm-hmm. She just wound up in a historically fast first lap. And 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 it and Nikki Hiltz was a little bit more conservative and it a little bit more, not a ton. She was still like in that on the back of that they front back. Next and to that each didn't, other. That didn't work out for her either. What, what they needed to do, yeah. what Laura Muir did, and hope to have some juice. But they're competitors, man. Like they, there's no reason. After watching what Jess Hull did, I'm sure Ellie's like, if she's doing that, I'm doing yeah. that. <laughs> and she won indoors. There's yeah. no reason she couldn't have hung with Jessica Hall realistically. No, and she sure. was she fresh didn't... from no 5Ks. Like she was like she did the it Olympic trials for most of the yeah. season. She's just maybe not capable of running seven or uh, uh, 350. That like, it, might be only she might be a, a, a 353 person it, who right. going out on 347 pace <laughs> or 343 pace for the World first 300. Pace. Yeah, it's just do. not do good. That. Do you, do you think she that, did the right call? Do, she seems to perform better when she is the heavy favorite. And I know that that is pretty common, but she's kind of the best in the U S or at least fighting for the win every single time. And then I feel like once you add in faith, you add in Saga, just a few other of like the world stars who might be a couple seconds faster. That's she applies the same tactics as if she can do whatever she wants. Like she was in the U S and it just doesn't always work out. She won that three K. She's She's at her best in moderately fast races that ratchet up. That takes that capitalizes on her skill set the best. I don't think she races any worse with the best people in the world. They're just historically special people. Mm, And she's not historically special. She's our best runner. She's incredible. But she's not she's not a world like best talent. And that's what happens to people when you run against world record holder. Like she ran against the world record holder. What do you what are you supposed to do? Faith right. has won three straight fifteen hundred golds. It's like you've got to, you've got to expect her to win again realistically, and she's going to do something tactically that's that's going to separate again. But I think that sub sixty on that first lap, she should have hung with Laura Mir. Laura I mean, Mir didn't did. choose that. Laura Mir rolled off the line thinking she was going to do her. I'm going to chill for a bit and looked up and was 30 meters down. Yeah. I was like, Oh crap. I don't think that was a tactic. That was a response to being nowhere. And then she kept running fast. She just didn't go out in 39 seconds for the first 300. She was carrying momentum into that last lap too. Like she was around the bend for 500 was gaining contact. And you know, there's something to be said about that. Instead of hanging on, moving backwards, she was rolling forward and she didn't, she still didn't finish. She still got fourth. Yeah. Right, she didn't get a medal. Fifth, fifth. Who got, only who got one fourth? person fifth, ran poorly? I don't know who it was. There's another Ethiopian in there. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. It was Bell, then an Ethiopian, then her. Yeah, Bell was surprised. Yeah, but only one person ran poorly. Now it's the guy. It's the guy. <laughs> Everyone else ran appropriately. In fact, Laura Amir had the second worst tactics. It just worked. Yeah. Everyone else ran appropriately for a, a final. They all put themselves in position to go. It's the same thing we said uh, Grant Fisher had to do and did. They all did the same thing. Yeah. Just that Grant Fisher didn't have someone take the race out at like 11.59 pace. <laughs> 11.50, yeah. Yeah, Some similar in the men's 800, just historical greatness. Hopple was, finishing American yeah. record in fourth, like 141. Like a good chunk. Hi. Someone said he pooped the bed on Let's Run. Oh my! Are you kidding me? Like no. What? Fourth if you watched it with sound all time and no clock, it looked like he ran poorly. Maybe. And then you saw what time he, was he in the ran. Mix. He, re- he put and himself you realize, right in there. Yeah. Well, he just looked sluggish at the end. They realize right. it's oh because they're running one forty one because he can't go any faster. I couldn't believe the times once they came across the board. I was like, oh, they went out in 50 mid or so. And usually you expect a two second. I'm like, oh, it's going to be like a 142 mid, which is a very good championship caliber. And once I saw 141, 19, I'm like, they were a quarter second away from the world record. What? Right. And there were a lot of them. And that's a world record that is insane. Yes. At the Olympics, wire to wire, very similar to what we saw right here. I was like, did it just happen again? Except it was a hack. Mm-hmm. And but Rudisha pulled every Rudisha pulled everybody to a you know fastest time at the time for a fourth place finisher, a fifth mm-hmm. place. Like the whole pack went with them, and this was very similar, where you just saw best placement results of all time again across the board by position. Except the people were running in lane two. 
I I can't, I talked about this morning on our episode, but I can't make sense of this race because visual, again, if you watched it on mute, visually, this was a tactical slow race. People started surging 300 meters into the race coming out wide. Bryce Hopple made a move like three, 350 into the race. That's people were running. That went too early too. Yeah. And people were running too yeah. wide around the turn on both turns. It, it looked like a tactical race. Yeah. So they all got pulled along, but I've never seen a pack run 141. No, you shouldn't be able happened. to run in lane two and run 141. No, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That, that's not, would, not having a Sadaji. Is that how you pronounce Sajadi. that? Sajadi. Sajadi. His kick has been, it was so devastating and like he looked so good in the qualifiers. It still was a good kick here. He just, he it's got detached. Back. Yep. A rope is just that dude. I like mm-hmm. that guy. He's, he's big. He's like yeah. Radisha where you yep. went on when he's on and he's running well, you look and say, no one has a stride that I've ever seen like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Radisha ran like a 400 guy who could run an eight and he runs like how you design an 800 guy to look. Yeah. yeah. And Juan Yoni, who ended up winning, is 20 years old. Like, this record's going down. It should. These windows for these 800 runners seem small. I know, smaller, but though. he had, you get a, a high level beat at, for the rest of the summer. They are fit right now. You get a few of them chasing this. Oh, you mean to this year? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That'd be great. So, you ready for, for the drug take? Oh, yeah. Uh, the French raid. Oh, I'm not, I don't even care about that. I'm talking the oh. legal drugs. This is, they finally put out a high level, like well thought out sodium bicarbonate mix that doesn't make people puke and poop themselves if they get the mix wrong. Really? Yeah. People have been doing sodium bicarbonate for like the last two to three years and the 800 meters and 400 meters is starting to get really fast again. Huh. And 1500 is about the cutoff of how long you can take. I mean, in college when we heard about it, it was about two minutes was as long as you can like really buffer it for. But the 800 is like the most beneficial race for the sodium bicarbonate mix. Hmm. Which is just baking well, soda. Yeah. Yeah. But now I, I want to say Morton or some other big brand they've actually had, like, had it in something. I a few have now developed like a, a scientific mix rather than just like take half a cup of yeah. <laughs> baking soda. Like they, yeah. they've, they've dialed it and it, it literally buffers lactic for you. Really? So it's a for chemistry experiment minutes. going on in your stomach. Well, wow. it was. An experiment. Now they've got it dialed. Hmm. It still has the same timer on it. Where I don't don't, know. don't try it after this distance. It sounds like, but well, if I you're not going to be producing the lactate, that um, that's true. Yeah, well, you produce it, but it's buffered in terms of its. I should know better. Anyways, we had a, a couple kids in college do it, and one of them ran the fastest four hundred he's ever run, and was a mess for like thirty minutes afterwards. Just pooping, puking. <laughs> Terrible right. stomach stuff going on, but he qualified Perfect. for nationals at the Worthy. first indoor meet of the year. And how anyways, go. Uh, yeah. it's partially the reason why people suddenly have really, really good kicks huh. in 800 hmm. because you're not tying up the same way. Hmm. Interesting, worth it. Deck is strong, check it out. Yeah, yeah, break mm. 16 of 400. Impossible <laughs> as an adult, yeah, no chance. Yeah, chug it right before few... the air bike. Just yeah. <laughs> If it's a guy, a little Morton. Yeah. I'll sit down. Good thing the race is two minutes left after that point. Because, yeah, we were seeing like 143, 144 for a lot of championship races for several years in a row. And now it's like, what happened? But apparently the uh, French government did some raid on Sajati. So I don't know what's going to come out of it. Allegedly, he missed a doping control test in the village. And mm-hmm. they raided his coach. Oh, His okay. room. And... He would be yeah. the one that... The, how like this improvement that he's had yeah whatever i i think the the biggest improvement was nadia bada from italy like second place she's a doll oh, where'd that come from she I, Grant yeah Fisher's it's easy to say but that's the i'm Grant not Fisher. accusing her but it's like you i didn't think of her as a threat for the medals and sagai bombs you, you expected her to be you expected a bunch of others and bada just put her nose in there Nasty. and ended up with the podium in a fourth place for a That's little how bit, the she rest was of the third. world's looking at Grant Fisher right now. Probably. We all believed or in it because he's our boy and we've watched or, what he's done. Yeah, yeah and Cole Hawker. That's Kenny that's Rose. how it's, the yeah. world looks at the US <laughs> mid distance right For now. Sure. Yeah. US put the work on people this year, man. Across the board, 
like was there any event that the US bombed besides the men's four by one? On on the men's and women's, huh? Like almost right, the two hundred the... because of Lyles. <laughs> but no, so there's not. Kenny. Kenny got second, fourth, yeah. uh, the four hundred, Quincy ended up winning it, eight hundred, you had Bryce Hopple set an American record, fourth, fifteen hundred, you got one three, five K Grant Fisher, ten K Grant Fisher marathon you had two top 10 finishers pretty good like not too bad and then and then on the uh the women's side you had shakari getting second uh for the i'm just gonna list the top side russell won yep gabby, gabby thomas winning the 200 the 400 women i uh you had paulino from dominican republic where did Holmes uh, end up nasir i don't i don't know if we meddled in we the, did not medal but in the i think we she and the 800 like 800 uh women's adventure happen. was not good you but know, we didn't have we didn't have our best runner in it <laughs> yeah 1500 eighth and seventh i think nikki and ellie were, were there. that could have been better yeah so i guess mid distance long sprint uh wasn't that great and then the 5k what was the best cranny she was like we no, i think i think Schweitzer ended up being like yeah nine, they were like nine they 10. got dropped and then 10k so i guess 10, women didn't have as good of an olympics but the the men it's like, where did this come from? Nice job, dudes. Yeah. All right. So we got Brisbane High Rocks mm-hmm. this weekend. We got FISO happening next I weekend. I sent out a request asking, hey, can you send me an email of the uh, the elite Let's names? Go. Nice. I'm like, we host Anything a back? podcast. We're trying to you know spread the news. I sent it on uh, Instagram Messenger, Facebook Messenger, Two separate people emails, Let's zero go. responses so far. Course. They're like, how are we supposed to know? Yeah. What are you asking us? I know uh, from talking with probably 15 or so people, but... Registration's down. Yeah. Not numbers, Surely. like the system's down already. Oh, it is? No, no, no. I'm July sure. July 31st was the last day that you could register, so... Didn't they have race day reg issues last year? Oh, Maybe. Regardless, I hope we got to talk about it in a little more detail. If anybody Let's listening and you know how to find those people, send it our way. Those people don't exist. Yeah. What one uh one last thing just on the Olympics, it'll be two minute thing. What's what are your uh favorite new sports that you maybe watched a little bit more than normal? Bouldering and rock climbing. That that to me, besides track and field, was my favorite one. The speed climbing? No, I preferred bouldering, but bouldering and lead climbing. climbing. Yeah, lead I didn't. Climbing wa- I did sweet. not see any of that. I thought the the speed climbing was silly. Um, I was like, "Are you serious? What is it? What are we watching here? How did this make this?" No, you you watch bouldering. Basically, they can earn up to hundred points with four separate walls, so twenty five per I've wall. Seen, I've seen competition bouldering on the like yeah. ESPN or something, and it it's definitely enjoyable. But lead cl- lead climbing so good because it's just you know you get to the middle section now every one that you touch is worth two points. You get a little higher now it's worth three, and you know. You know, I need to get this many points. So it's just that one hold up above. And like, there are so many close finishes on that. It's, it's amazing to watch. They took a sport that isn't something you could pitch in a meeting to make it exciting. And they found a way to make it exciting to watch. And it flows like crazy. There's no downtime. And they made it easy to understand without having ever watched it before. You wouldn't even have to have the sound on. You can see it. They put the numbers next to the hold. You can just see visually Did you reach exactly the five? what's Did you happening reach the 10? yeah and then as soon as they're done they're off and the next person's on it's and it's it's, it's a quick it's like you, you hear a bell or like a, three a minutes buzzer four minutes they sprint out and like the they have you know that time to start recognizing it and start climbing so it's it's instant yeah, very like quick that. turnover yeah i watch nothing no, track handball field. track and yeah. field is enough everything else nothing <laughs> all right all right Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you next week.